Hey, Seven Figure Builder family. This is Julie Baranek, host of the Seven Figure Builder Show. And I'm here with my friend, Daniel Gomez. Hey, Daniel. How you doing, Julie? I'm excited to be here. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Yes, it is. And you have some good news for us that you believe we were all born to be millionaires. <laughs> I, you know, I, I believe that. You yeah. know what the irony is? I didn't believe it when I was a kid. <laughs> well, yeah, I want to hear what changed your mind and, and all about this. But you are an amazing award-winning keynote speaker, business coach, executive coach, corporate trainer, podcast figure recipient. Like you have done amazing things. You're a published author, international best-selling author, right? Multiple books. And can you tell us, just tell us a bit about your business. Like what brought you to this point? You know, it, it's, it's funny you asked that because I was on a flight coming back yesterday from Nashville. We had an event in Nashville this past week. And, you know, sometimes you sit next to a person and this woman just kept on just ranting about her daughter didn't know what she wanted to do. And I'm like, well, okay, well, how old is your daughter, ma'am? She's like, well, she's a, she's a sophomore, going to be a junior. I go, can I tell you something? Half the people that graduate with a college degree from college at 23 or 24, they still don't know what the hell they want to do. Right. So cut your daughter some break. And I think so many times we put so much pressure on ourselves of, of what we want to do. And I say that because never in my life, Julie, did I ever think I'd be doing what I'm doing today. I mean, just being honest, right? And how I got where I'm at today is seven years ago, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. And for the first time in my life as a grown man, 44 years old, I didn't have an answer. I didn't know what to do. But I knew that I had a God who loved me. And what I all I could do was say this, hun, we're going to make it. We're going to figure it out. And I think so many people, they, they, they want all the answers up front. And, and life isn't like that. You figure it out. Well, guess what? Business isn't the same way either. You don't know all the answers. You figure it out. So when that happened to me, she had a double mastectomy. She got depressed on me. Then things got really real because now I had to make a decision as a husband. Was I going to hire somebody to take care of her, Julia? Was I going to be the man, honor my wife, honor our vows. And I ended up resigning from the automotive industry, very successful for almost 20 years. We had our house paid off, money in the bank, and that couldn't save my wife. Wow. So I just, I, I resigned. And then in that season of our life, I was about to go look for another opportunity, right? Because I ran multi-million dollar dealerships. I heard a whisper just in my heart from God that said, I want you to be a motivational speaker. And that's when things got interesting because everybody started laughing at me. Wow. And now I'm laughing at them. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the record, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So, you know, <laughs> you weren't alone out there at all. But yes, you, you've definitely had the last laugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the thing is, right, you, everybody's thought to think like the masses. And and when you make a decision, when, when this was going on in our lives and you got to take this in mind, right? So when, when somebody says um, they use their wife as an excuse, they use their kids as an excuse, because a lot of people say that it's not the right time. My wife had, had just had two major surgeries. One of them was a double mastectomy. Second one was a major skin cancer surgery. And that's the season. That's the, the week that I made a decision to start my business. And the people you think are going to support you. And ladies and gentlemen, this is just the. It ain't going to be your friends and it ain't going to be your family. And that's just the truth. And I think when, when people started seeing that I didn't care what anybody said, that's when I really started taking off because that's what holds us back so many times. What our family says, those closest to us sometimes, because they know the, they know you as the old you, they have no idea of who you can become. So it was definitely a, a season of, for me to, I cried many, 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 many days. But the truth is that when I told my wife this, now she tells me she wanted to kill me because she thought I, I had lost it. I double mastectomy. Right. But now where we're at, it's like it, it was definitely been it's been a, a, a rewarding journey, but it's definitely been a challenging journey where there's a lot of maturity and old identities that have passed away. Yeah. And it just reminds me of from the hardest times in our life comes the most growth. Right. And well, also people don't see the vision. Sorry, people don't see the vision that you have in your heart, which is something I believe wholeheartedly. Like they didn't hear God implanting that on your heart and what you see. I always say this now is the dream is for you. Yeah. And the problem is we share our dream with everybody and your dream's not meant to be shared with everybody. 
you got to protect your dream, right? You have to get the dream in your heart and you got to protect your dream. You got to protect your heart because there, there's some unhappy people out there. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but people are just complacent. And, and what happens is when you start following your dreams, right? When you start talking about your dreams, first of all, if I would have told somebody, you know what, I'm going to be a millionaire in seven years, or I'm going to do this in seven years. They're like, you're dumb. Like, what are you talking about? You're just in the car business. Like, I'm like, no, like, I'm going to do it. Well, first of all, most of the people are going to support you. So right off the bat, you already understand, okay, this crowd that I'm with, they're not going to get me where I want to go. And I think for me, that's one of the instinctive behaviors that came out is when God put that in my heart. I said, you know, I'm going to become a motivational speaker. I was like, my group of friends, right? You become the five people, you, right? You're with five broke people. You're going to become the six. You're with five car pit, right? Car dogs to say back in the car business. Uh, that's what you're going to talk about. Yeah. So I said, well, these guys, Marty, Steve, these guys ain't going to get me where I need to go. So I really was intentional on pulling myself away from that inner circle that I was with. But this is where most people give up and go, right? Because write this down, ladies and gentlemen. You always run back to what you're familiar in times of adversity. You always run back to what you're familiar with in those challenging days of adversity. And we run back because it's just, it's comfortable. We want to, it's going to be okay, right? We all want to be comforted. But in that point, I call it in the middle. I call it when you're becoming the butterfly from being that caterpillar and you're in the cocoon when it's dark and cold and ugly and the changes are taking most people don't make it out of there because they, right. They either, somebody takes them out. So their wings ain't strong enough. And I think that that, that season was very hard for me because I cried many days, like I said, and it, it was about a three month process until I came out of the cocoon and I could be like, there's Julie, there's James Dentley. Now I had some associations of people on the other side. And this is how it happens. Think about what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Daniel made about 150 to 250,000 average in the car business, quarter million at times. Now I started hanging around with millionaires and multimillionaires, Dr. James Dendy, Bill Walsh, Michael Butler, all these different people. And wow, my income soared. It's not by accident, Julie. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And to what you were saying before with hard times, we revert back. It's because our brain tells us that was safe. Right. But we have to push through to get through to the other side, which is a new you and a, a different transformation. And it's a transformation in progress. Yeah. Because so, so many times we, we see our social media mm -hmm. and it, it's, 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 it, it becomes jaded. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Everybody can talk a good talk. But when it comes time, like I'm going through that right now, to be honest with you, like to be totally transparent with your audience, we've been crushing it. We've been amazing. But I've always had, right, I've invested money in the studio that we're in right now. I have a studio next door and a bigger one. But then, like, this year was the year that God said, now you're going to go get an, a bigger office outside of your home. And it sounded good, and then we were looking. But now that we have the office, and this is, you're talking about something new, right? We just got, we just signed the, the contract, like, two two weeks ago. Now we put a director of operations in place. Now we got more overhead. Now we got more revenue. Now not only am I doing what I'm doing now, I got to train everybody yeah. and I'm out of my comfort zone. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's going to be like last yesterday, I caught myself saying, is it worth it? <laughs> we were making a good profit. We we're, I mean, right. We were doing business, but yes, it's worth it because people need you. There's, there's, there's employees that are waiting to be employed by you. There's people that need your help. There's people that are lost. And if you don't expand your wings and fly higher and further, then you're being selfish. And, and that's what I felt like God put in my heart is, are you going to be selfish where you're at in your little pond? Or is it time to go to the bigger ocean and spread your wings? And many people, right, they revert or they do this, they contract and they just shrink back because now things ain't the way they were because now they're really getting out of their comfort zone. And it's not, it's, not, it's easier to say than it is to do, put it that way. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, a big part of this whole transformation is the circle that you're in, right? Like that you mentioned, but how does your mindset and the way that you, you think about things tie in with, you know, what it is in your future ahead of you? It's everything. And, and I'll give a great example of that. 
is that I had a coach that I hired last year and it started off great. We worked, um, we, we signed an agreement and worked together for three months, 90 days. It was, it was an intense coaching program. And six weeks in, it kind of just went out the door. And I got really hurt by this coach, right? I really opened up my heart to him. He betrayed me and it just, it is what it is. I got stuck, got angry, and then just started kind of going through the motion. But it was, it was okay because we're still doing business, right? I never really stopped, but I knew I needed some help. And, and the interesting thing is I started noticing as I worked with this one coach, my language started changing with him. Mm -hmm. I started hiring this other coach, which is right. He has the $10 million coaching program. He has the jet. I don't have that, but I've noticed that since I've been with them almost a year in, in April, that my language started changing. And I write this down, ladies and gentlemen, change your language, change your life, change your language, change your life, change your language. You change your business. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, think about this. If we work, I'm going to give a simple analogy that way people can understand it, right? You work at Kentucky Fried Chicken, you're not talking about hamburgers. You're talking about what? Fried chicken. Did you drop the chicken? Did you make the buttermilk biscuits? Hey, you're talking about chicken. But when you go to McDonald's, you're talking about the Big Mac. It's a different language. And it's the same thing in business, right? If, if you're playing small and you're talking about hundreds, and all you talk about is hundreds, well, somebody presents to you an opportunity that's thousands, you're going to be like, I can't afford it. It's too much. Well, then you're stuck because you're not used to those bigger numbers. And I think for me, as, as my language has changed this past year, I invested in myself even more. Now I'm talking about, hey, Daniel can buy a jet. Hey, it's, in, it's, it's within grasp because I truly believe what you touch I, eventually becomes a reality in our lives and our business. For sure. And I mean, you mentioned about talking with a coach, like it's so important to invest back in yourself to continue moving forward. But how do you help? How do you help people do that? I mean, I see the amazing sticker shock behind <laughs> you, but talk to us about what, what does that look like? So, so it, it means like really changing your environment, right? Nothing happens until you change your environment. Cause when you change your environment, you change your language. And, and the way we do that is, is really you have to be intentional and, and write that word, ladies and gentlemen, intentional. So many times we leave things to chance. We, we hope. And yes, you want to have hope because, right, the Bible talks about hope, but people have sometimes the wrong hope, right? I hope this happens. No, but are you being intentional in getting around people like Julia? Because you talk about things that people need to hear. Because if you never put yourself in those bigger rooms where the language is different, a great example is this, is, is that... If you go to free networking events, those ain't my clientele yeah. and nothing wrong with those people, but those people don't even invest in a, in a networking event. Yeah. So the language is different. What they talk about is different. They talk about happy hour. They talk about, right, these other things and they talk about it's too expensive. Well, then that's not my avatar. But when you start going from, from free networking events, now you start paying maybe $100, $150 for an event, which is a stretch for some people. I understand that. But now those people, like you said, they've invested in themselves because they paid $150, which can be a lot. Like for me, in total transparency, I was running a multi-million dollar Chevrolet dealership. I was spending almost a million dollars in, in inventory easily, easily, easily every two weeks. I'm writing the checks. Hey, no problem because it wasn't my money. Now I got my business six years ago, a $500 bill. I'm like, oh, crap. Right? Like you're thinking about it. I'm just being totally transparent. Yeah, Totally. So, so you have to put yourself in situations where you stretch your capacity. And I think many people don't, right? They, they have a 16-ounce dream in their life, but they want to live in a little two-ounce cup, and it doesn't work that way. And the way you grow your capacity is you challenge yourself, right? So what used to be a lot was 500. Now I'm spending 1,000 like nothing because, right, we need video editing. We need employees. We need, and once you start doing it, it becomes easier. And then you go to 3000 and now it's like, okay, what's well, 3000 I can pay that. No biggie. Right. But, but the thing is this at first 500 seemed like a million dollars. So how do you do it? You challenge yourself to, to do those small baby steps and investing in your business, buying things that, that you need, you know, you need, because if you don't buy it in a, in a, in a, a nice printer, how are you going to print up your information? And so many people, this is going to get you in trouble, ladies and gentlemen, 
if you keep on looking for free, you're going to get cheap stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And also to your point earlier, investing in the coaches, the people that you connect with, the people you surround yourself with, when you're able to connect with people that have already paved the road ahead of you, it's a heck of a lot easier because they've got a blueprint, they've got a roadmap, like they've got, you know, the vision that they can help pull you where you want to go, but you need to be selective of who you're spending your time with, right? Because it could take you in multiple different directions with your business. And I've done that. I've, I've, I've done some bad investments in myself, right? And it's going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen. People mm -hmm. kind of, you, you want to, you want to assume and trust people, but it happens. Don't beat yourself up. Maybe you're, maybe you're right now listening to, to me and Julian, you're, you're stuck at a quarter million in revenue. You're stuck at half a million in revenue because you're scared to make that next leap. I, I want to encourage you. You don't fail. You learn. And those failures become lessons, right? They become lessons to make you wiser. And you have to go through that. If you don't go through that, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're not progressing, you're regressing. And if you're not creating, you're disintegrating. And then people wonder why I'm not happy, right? Many times we hit a plateau. And when we hit that plateau in business, Julie, it doesn't matter if it's at 100,000, if it's at a quarter million, if it's at a half a million or at a million, it's like you hit those plateaus because I've been there, right? <laughs> you make six figures. I made it, right? People think like, no, 100,000 is... It's not a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen. And then you, you, next that I showed is a quarter million. This is the way I teach young entrepreneurs. And then half a million. Many people, they get stuck at a quarter million because they did, never fathom that they could do that. And and the thing is this, is, is we had a gentleman named Tony Pollard. He came to our Sticker Shock Speaking Academy, kind of what you were saying. And and I, I've been a paid speaker since I, out the gate, I've been a paid speaker. I thought everybody was a paid speaker. Well, when COVID happened, God said, hey, open up Sticker Shock. And I'm like, Sticker Shock? What's Sticker Shock? So I called my publisher at the time. I said, hey, man, God gave me this idea. Sticker Shock Speaking Academy, what do you think? I thought he was going to tell me, you're dumb, you're crazy. Like, what are you thinking? Dude, let's do it. I'm, come on, right? You need to surround yourself with people like that. You need to surround yourself with the Michael D. And, and I was like, what did you say? He goes, yeah, let's do it. I'm in. Come on. So that gave me the confidence. Well, crap, let's do it. So... We booked we 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 booked the hall because San Antonio was one of the few cities, one of the, and Texas was one of the few states open during COVID, right? Granted, we 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 booked the first one July twenty. It was July 27, 2020. By that time, what happened? The world closed down in March, July, right? Everybody thought they were going to go back to work in May. Nothing happened, right? They were still so by July, people were dying, right? <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I'm not this word they were dying to get away from their husband they were dying to get away from their wives they were dying to get away from their kids so we had over 25 people because it's an, it, it, it is a high level ticket offer that we offer at the at event and people's lives were changed wow. but they came knowing because daniel i have trained right daniel has trained the united states air force so i can get you from unpaid to paid exactly to what you're saying and and you gotta buy those shortcuts you have to invest in those shortcuts because if you right, that came to me because I spent 20 years running a dealership. I understand business. I understand the, the, the business language. And many people don't. So they don't know how to sell themselves. They don't know how to market. They don't understand a financial. They don't understand profit and loss. And I learned all this because that was the career that I was that I was in. So when you come to Sticker Shock, we give you the shortcut from being coming an unpaid speaker to a paid speaker. We show you how to build your business from speaking, instead of speaking one on one, of speaking to many. And many people don't know the formula. So we give you the shortcut to your success. And that's why we had an Anthony Potter, like I said, from one September to the next, he made over $75,000. He's like, man, everybody needs to come to Sticker Shock because now I know what to do. That's amazing. That's amazing. And such a shortcut for getting to that point in your life that, you know, whatever those goals are that you want to get to. But what are the, the gaps I'm curious that you see for people that, and you've mentioned a couple of them, but what are the gaps that you see that business owners have in their business or things that they're missing? Well, so, so, so the first thing I'll say is this, is, is we'll talk about the mindset aspect of it first, right? They don't believe it for themselves. It's easier to believe it for Julie. It's easier to believe it for Danny because now they're a spectator, right? I, they, it's easier to believe it for somebody else than to believe it for yourself because many people, they don't count the cost and it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some tears. It's going to cost you some coaches. It's going to cost you an investment. And many people, that's why they take that approach, right? Think about it. Everybody loves to watch sports. Why? Because it's always easier to be a spectator. 
So first you got to get the right mindset and believe it for yourself. I tell people that you need to understand a, you got to believe it for yourself and B you are your best investment. And until you do those two things, you're never going to succeed in business. Then once you take, once you have the courage to start betting on yourself, right? You have to have, right? Don't overthink the perfect. I'm not a big business plan person because I know hundreds of thousands of businesses that had a business plan and they failed. Why? Because they wanted everything too perfect. Start with where you're at. So once you start a, you need to understand sales. Every business needs to understand sales. And I think as, as, as the more I dig deeper into, into what the two main problems are this, right? Most people, they keep terrible books the first year or two. They don't know what's coming in, accounts payables, account receivables. They don't have no idea what it is. And for me, when I came into what we're doing now at DG Enterprises, in the automotive industry, we always opened the month, we closed the month. It was just, it was automatic. We never started, we never started February without closing out January. And that's that's what I practice here in our corporation. And then B, they don't have a sales process in place. I'm like, okay, well, what's your sales process? Well, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, like, what's your sales process? And I think that that's where over 90% of businesses fail because they don't have A, a sales process, B, they don't have the follow-up system, and C, they don't even know how to ask for the business. And a great example is, is you hear these, these one-year or less entrepreneurs, and the biggest mistake they say at a presentation is this. What do you think? And you and I both know, Julie, when you say, what do you think? Automatically, they're going to say, I'm going to think about it. Mm -hmm. So I think the key component that most people, right, and is, is that they don't have the right, they don't have the right sales strategy, they don't have the right sales process, and they never invest in sales for themselves or for a sales team. So I think that's a huge, I think if you don't have that, you're never going to grow or scale. And, and by God's grace, right, I was, I mean, I, this is a true story. I'm going to share a two fun fact. I was so arrogant when I was younger, right? And I say when I was younger, I'm confident now I'm not arrogant. I did, I did have a swole head when I was younger. But when I bought my 2008 Corvette, I was so I was so arrogant. I had the word closer on it, right? Because I was a closing machine. There was no one that I couldn't close, but I was good, right? I had the wrong approach, the wrong attitude. But if you brought me somebody, I was going to close them because I knew how to get it. I, I knew how to, I just, I, that's what I did. That was what I, I mean, that's why I moved up. So you got to understand selling is one thing, but then you also got to become a good closer. And not that you're going to be selling people what they don't need, but sometimes people love to be, I've learned this in business. People love to be led by somebody who's confident. And I can take you from A to B, ladies and gentlemen, because I've been there. I'm a paid speaker. And I can take you from being broke because I used to eat cereal with water to becoming a successful business that has over a million dollars in revenue because I built one myself. And most people, they can't do that because they right, they don't have the right proper thinking. And if you don't change the mindset, if you don't change the thinking. And the thing is, they don't even understand what most. I challenge you this, Julie. Next time you go out to lunch or just ask, hey, let me ask you this question. Are your mind and the brain the same thing? <laughs> most people are going to think yes. Right? And the truth is your brain is not your mind. Your mindset is the experiences you've had, the biosphere, which includes your brain. But a lot of times your mindset is the experiences you've had in your memory, but also the traumas that are stored in your nervous system that people don't even realize. They think your mindset is here, right? Because everybody says mindset. Everybody points to their brain when they do their videos. But the truth is your brain is not your mindset. And Next time I bet somebody lunch that, I bet you they'll get it wrong. <laughs> I will. I'm going to ask that. I love that question. No, it's so true. I mean, it's it's all throughout our body and our experiences. It all kind of resonates up to our mind and occurs in our brain. But yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And I mean, obviously, your faith is important to you. It's important to me, too. It's core to who I am. But how has that led your business? Again, you've touched on it a little. And how has it impacted you? It's everything in and I, I say that because when I was younger, I was that arrogant 2008 version of me. It was all about Daniel. It was Daniel, then business, then the employees, then family and God. I think Peter taught her, to be honest with you. That was kind of where Daniel was. And when my dad ended up passing away, it really opened up my heart to, to my faith. 
And of course, just over the years, as I became more successful, I just kind of backslid a little bit. And then when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, I knew what it was. I mean, it was God bringing me home. I, that's the way I saw it. So I embraced it, right? Even though it it sucked, I'm just using the word, forgive me, but it just, it just really was a hard time that it sucked because it brought me to my knees. But I knew, Julie, that it was, it was God opening my heart. And when the idea came of, of being a speaker and making it a business and opening it up, and then our brand, Daniel Gomez Inspires, was our first brand that came out that we trademarked. We were making a little bit of revenue, right? Like I said, we hit six figures. And then one day, I just felt like God says, are you done? I'm like, am I done what? Are you done being busy doing nothing? And in my mind, I'm like, hey, we made over 100000 Like, I'm doing it, right? Like, <laughs> by, all, by, by all means. So this is a true fun fact. Over, right? Over, 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 over. There's over, what? I think over 10,000 or over 100,000 coaches in America. 47, right? The average income for every coach is 47,000. That's the average income across America for coaches. Wow. And I'm like, I'm a speaker. I'm doing a little bit of this. I broke, all right? I'm doing good. <laughs> You've doubled that. <laughs> so then he goes, if you really want this to succeed, you need to change your, your model. I'm like, okay. And if you go to my LinkedIn profile, it says Daniel Gomez, me. I'm the president of DG Enterprises. Because God said, you need to make me the CEO if you want this to take off. Mm. Once I made God the CEO, the Godhead, right? The leader of the business, the leader of my life. Then I honored my wife and then my kids. And then the business, everything just exploded. When, when people were closing in 2020, kind of like what you asked me about, what's very important? It's sales because if you don't have any sales, there's no revenue. And if there's no revenue, there's no income. And if there's no income, guess what? There's no money to pay the bills. So whenever, when anybody says, I don't want to be salesy or that, well, you got to learn how to use your language to communicate to your target audience. And we doubled in 2020, we doubled in 2021, and we just continued growing. But it's because I put God, family, and then business. And so my faith and my relationship with God is everything. And a lot, the truth is, our book, The Makings of a Millionaire Mind, which just exploded, it'll, it'll be two years that it was released in, in, in April, like this opened up a whole different other level of speaking for me where now like they're seeking me to be the keynote speaker. I'm going to be speaking at, at a, at a huge solar conference here in San Antonio, March 1st and 2nd. Then I got a big event in June and then just so many opportunities that, that it, our brand just exploded with that. And the thing is this, is that people say, well, I don't want to be an author. I'm like, well, you're, you you got to start changing your mindset because I wrote my first book. You were born a fly that you were asking me about, right? My first international bestseller. Then that opened up, right? The book led to book coaching, which I wasn't, didn't want to be a book coach, but I just kind of did it because at the time it was additional revenue. But because I did so many of those sessions, then now we have our own book publishing division. So we've published over a hundred books and one thing that leads to another and you just, you just never know. Right. And, but if you're not willing to bet on yourself, you're never going to know what God has for you. And get out of your comfort zone. Right. <laughs> yes. And it's, and, and it's frustrating. The, the, the first book we ever did, the first book we ever did under our own DG Enterprises, I was scared. I didn't want to do it. And, but I pushed myself because, you know, this is how good God is. And I got to share this because this woman came up to me and she goes, Daniel, I, I want, I've been wanting to do a book. I know you do some, a little bit of this. And she goes, but um, I want you to help me. I was like, great. Let me send you to X, Y, Z. She's like, no. I want to work with you. And I said, Mary, I don't do books. She's like, Daniel, God told me to work with you. I said, look, let me pray about it. Can I get back with you in a day or two? She's like, yeah. The next morning I was in prayer. And one of our clients called me out of the blue. I hadn't talked to her probably in about six months. She said, I don't know what you're going through, but God just said he's going to walk you through it. And I knew right then and there that, and once I commit, right, people want people this, listen to this in business, ladies and gentlemen, you must make the commitment in order for that one thing that you're missing to show up. Let me say it again. You must make the commitment. You must make the investment, whether it's a decision. And once you commit, the missing pieces will come together. Once I committed that I truly committed to her, I took her deposit. I took her deposit. 
not knowing how the heck I was going to do the book. I had a good, I mean, right. Not in a bad way. Right. I had part of the pieces, but now once I committed to it, everything else I needed showed up. And now it's a big part of what we do. And I love it because most people, they have the wrong concept, right? Sticker shock is a concept. The millionaire mind is a concept. And most people have the wrong concepts and they wonder why they're not selling their books, selling their coaching, selling their speaking because they're just, they have a bad concept. Yeah. Yeah. And just following that, that path and the, you know, once you commit to that, sticking with it. And you've got an amazing podcast in addition. I mean, obviously I'm a big fan of podcasting, but <laughs> tell us how does that tie in with your business with, you know, what has your experience been with that? When, 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 when that happened also, that was during COVID. Cause the truth is when, when COVID hit in March 15th or 16th, that San Antonio, Texas closed down. I lost $50,000 in uh, right honorariums. Didn't know what I was going to do. I, I, I had a corporate account that said, Hey, um, don't come in, don't come in April. I'm going to just kind of take a break. So I'm like, okay. So I had a little bit of savings, but then in prayer, the idea came about sticker shock. And then the idea came about podcast, right? Start your show. And then this is what I said, who's going to listen to my podcast. And I had already trained the United States Air Force. I already had a little bit of a following and, and sometimes we just, but this is, this, this is, this is even more, I'm going to be totally transparent. I had been practicing Julie behind the scenes, just kind of just my, in my own silly way. Right. And I say silly, cause I was just like, you know what, this is DTV and welcome. And right. I was just doing my little thing. But then when God says, start your show, I'm like, well, who's going to listen to it? And now we have one of the top podcasts globally, 0.5% top on, on this lip notes. And just, it's just, it's been amazing. We have a corporate sponsor, but I'll tell you that it's really grown our brand because it helps a lot with the SEO. And oh, yeah. it just, it, it, it's really, it's connected me with people like Kevin Carmichael, Brad Lee, um, Brandon Dawson from Cardone Ventures, people that I, I would have never had a chance to talk with one-on-one. -on -one. So it's definitely opened some bigger doors. And not only that, I'll go back and I'll listen to some of the episodes that really just, you, you get their wisdom and it goes back to what we we're saying, right? When you hang around with five bigger people than you and you, you kind of get their energy, their, their, their vibe, it, it just, it rubs off on you. So it's, it's helped you grow me. And it's really right. We're going on in May will be four years that we started it. And it's, been, it's a commitment. But most people see the fact that, man, you got to invest that every single month for your podcast. I'm like, yeah, but it's a commitment to me. And not only that, it, it, it helps people, your audience connect with your heart because they really hear who you're like. And it's just right. It's a, it's a way of giving back to the marketplace. And I truly believe that the marketplace rewards you according to the value. You, so it's a, it's a great way just to pour into people. And whether they become a paid client or not, it doesn't matter. You're just people need sometimes to hear what we have, we talked to say about it on the Daniel Gomez Inspire show. Absolutely. No, and I, I agree with everything. Um, it's such a powerful platform to connect with people. I mean, like you said, you, you're who you become and who you surround yourself with. And in my opinion, it's podcasting is the best format for it because I connect with you, right? Like if I were to book an hour of your time, private one-on-one -on -one meeting, it would cost me a heck of a lot more than our free conversation we're having today, right? Like, it's just amazing to be able to connect with people and just get the pearls of wisdom from you and be able to share it with our audience and really help transform lives in mass, which I just, I love it. So I love connecting with you on this. Yeah. And then people, but see, people need to change the perspective on that. It's like, yes, you're making an investment, whatever it is for you. Maybe you're not, you're listening to, to us on this amazing show and you're thinking, man, I would love to have a podcast. Do it. Stop looking at the end. A, A, this is what you got to stop doing. Stop looking at things as a cost and start looking at it as an investment to the future you're building for yourself. I said again, stop seeing everything as a cost and start seeing it as an investment to the future you, the future business. And something that I say, a little hack that I say to myself, I'll say this, right? <laughs> it, it's, 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 it helps you because it's a long word. It anchors in you. And I say, whenever I get that, invoice or that vendors, whatever it may be. I'm like, man, right. And, and, and the truth is this, as your business grows, those, those invoices get bigger and bigger. Oh yeah. And, and you got to tell yourself, right. I am right. This down, ladies and gentlemen, I am ridiculously happy that I get to pay X, Y, Z. 
I am ridiculously happy that I get to pay my vendors. I am ridiculously happy that I get to pay for my studio. I am ridiculously happy that I get to pay for my car. Like you got to start training yourself that way. And because it, it doesn't matter. Every new level is going to require a new you. And that's where people mess up. And like I said, I, from what I, my, I've experienced is you got to start getting comfortable, ladies and gentlemen, with bigger and bigger numbers. And if you're not getting comfortable with bigger and bigger numbers, then you're not stretching yourself for the next level. Because I, I remember I asked my coach one time, I said, Hey man, I said, what, what was he like? What's been your biggest experience doing this? And he goes, man, he goes, we went out to dinner. I had never seen a dinner bill for $15,000. And I said, what? He goes, yeah, he goes, it really stretched me. It stretched me to who I am now. And now it's kind of like, there's people that pay that for dinner. And I was like, wow. He goes, well, it was a group party, right? There was about seven of them, but still it was 15,000. That following week I went to Nashville and a client of mine flew out there. We went to an Arte event and um, it was good. And we went to dinner, went up to the JW Marriott, the steakhouse they have there in Nashville. And God had already told me, pay the bill, right? You need to pay the bill. So I'm like, I got, I got it, man. He's like, Daniel, give me the bill. I'm like, I got it. Don't worry about it. And he goes, you know, it's, give me the bill, right? Because I'm not where he's at. And he goes, give me the bill. I go, I got it. I, trust me. I paid it. First time I ever paid over $1,000 for a, four, a dinner of four. But it was a, definitely, I'm glad I did it because it definitely didn't feel comfortable, right? But it stretched me to where now it's like I go spend 300 bucks, 400 bucks for dinner. It's, 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 it's just normal, right? What is normal? Well, normal is what you make it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let me say it again. What is normal? <laughs> normal, ladies and gentlemen, is what you make it. So stop making, right, a nice dinner for you and your wife who you haven't taken out in a while. You haven't honored your wife. You're wondering why she's grumpy. Take her out to a nice dinner. Stop being a cheapskate. Chili's isn't, right? She deserves better than Chili's. And I'm just being honest. Absolutely. Well, and to that point, I, you've accomplished so much in your career, personally, professionally, everything we've been talking about. But what does success look like for you? I think what I said earlier, not I think, but I know is it's putting God first. And because I put God first, my family has healed, right? I, I was that arrogant guy. And especially being a Mexican-American, I was real machismo. It was my way or the highway with my wife. And I think just really... Success is having God in your life. He gives me a lot of peace because I, I couldn't, there's no way I could operate what I have today without him. And just all the resistance that comes with a business like ours sometimes, because you're going to have haters. You're going to have people that don't like you, that despise you. And it's okay, especially when you're, when you use God's name, right? Because that's who I'm about. I tell people, if you don't like, if you don't like me talking about God, unfriend me. So it's having the peace of God that is success. And because of that, the relationships that I've been able to restore with my wife, with my kids, that's success. And then being able to help the homeless and the needy. I'm, I'm a big believer of for every dollar you make. And some of you need to write this down. For every dollar you make, you need to give a dime to God, first of all. And then you need to give a dime to yourself, second of all. And... When you pay God first, right, whether it's through a charity or get, help someone along the way, and then you reward yourself and you save a dime because you never know when you're going to need a dime in the future, that's success. I love it. I love it. And if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes, what would you tell them? You're worthy. It breaks my heart. Over 90% of human beings. And I say human beings, and I used to say Americans, but when I went and spoke in London, I spoke at the Excel um, in London, and it was an amazing opportunity. I realized that even them, people in Europe, undervalued themselves. So 90% of people undervalue who they are. So I'm here to tell you that because you're undervaluing yourself, you're not getting the reach that you need because you're undervaluing yourself. You're not helping as many people as you should. And this is huge because you're undervaluing yourself. You don't believe you're worthy and deserving when you are because you matter. Because God's the one that gave you that business idea. You're underpricing your services because you don't see yourself as valuable. 
That's what I would tell the world because it's the truth. And they need to hear it because they need to know that they're valuable. They do for sure. And we need to hear it over and over again. And when you work with Daniel, he's going to help you. So <laughs> I want to help. I want to help your people. And I got a free gift. Text the word millionaire, right? Millionaire, no exclamation point at the end, no emojis. Just the word, text the word millionaire to 210 942 5059. That's 210 942 5059. And I'm going to give them this awesome millionaire mind affirmation to where they're going to be able to frame it, put it on the wall. And these are the affirmations that helped me change my life. And it's going to be my gift to your audience. You are amazing. Thank you, Daniel. And how can they find you? Like we'll have that in the show notes, but how can they find you? How can they work with you? Yeah, well, just go to go to our website, uh, danielgomezglobal.com. Send me a message and put in put in the notes, right? Um, that you saw us here on this amazing show. Thank you for having me, first of all. And just put right, um, Julie. And then that's like that's a key word when you put it in there. And I'll give I'll give your audience a complimentary discovery session because I want to give back to your audience. And you heard me right. That's a complimentary discovery session that I can help you with. It's my gift to your audience. And I would love to do that for you. Just go to danielgomezglobal.com or better yet, let me know what I'm going to get out. Email me at daniel at danielgomezspeaker.com. That's daniel at danielgomezspeaker.com. Put discovery session and this podcast and I'm going to give you that complimentary session because I want to give back to you. Thank you. You are amazing. And please, everybody, like this is incredible. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. So thank, well, thank you so much for being on. No, thank you for having me. You're an amazing host. And just thank you for just giving me the opportunity to share my heart with you. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's beautiful when you can give back and truly help people. And I can see that you really care. So I'm honored to be a guest on your show. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. And you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com. And if you like this episode, please do share it. That's how people find us. And I will see you on the next episode.